I, I've heard about Joe Burrow, this brother, something special. I mean, mm -hmm. he's something special. I can't deny it. I've heard about Lamar Jackson. They gave him $260 million for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Deshaun Watson got $230 million. He got some stuff to prove in Cleveland. Cool. Okay, we get that. Yeah. And we got Kenny Pickett. Now, I like him. Yeah. I do like him. Yeah. But I, I do have reasons for concern. How are you feeling about your Steelers this year? Oh, Steelers is going, they're going up, man. Right, They're going that, up. You got that kind of confidence. They're going up, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I like Pickens. Oh, yeah. I like Deontay Johnson and oh, Najee yeah. Harris. Oh, yeah. And you know we, we, we got to love T.J. Watt. But, right. but I just brought up to you what exists in the AFC North. You ain't mm -hmm. worried at all? I'm worried. Okay. But we're going to handle business, though. <laughs> you worried? we got Mike Tomlin on the side. Okay. All right. So all I'm right. not really that worried. That, you know what I mean? That's true. So, so when you say they're going this way, I mean, are you predicting, like, playoffs or anything playoffs, like that? Playoffs, for sure. Playoffs for sure. Still is going to play. All right, so who they gonna knock out? They gotta knock out somebody. They can't. I mean, they ain't gonna get there. Getting the last place, they gotta be at least. Cleveland in third ain't place. going. Cleveland ain't going. Yeah, that's kind of true. I don't believe in Cleveland. They ain't either. going. Cincinnati, what, uh, you know, hey, uh, Joe uh, Burrow, right. Lamar Chase, T. Higgins. Uh, you know, they still got to uh, deal with uh, T.J. Uh, Watt. Right, well, well, Lamar Jackson got OBJ. Lamar now, Jackson's Odell a bad Jr. boy. And they got OB, Odell Beckham Jr. Now. Yeah, I love you Odell. know that, right? Odell's a bad boy, but but you gotta stay healthy. That is true. You just had to, you know, you got to stay healthy, man. Do something like he's that. a bad man now. Okay, okay. But you got to stay healthy. Right. I think he's a stud. The brother can ball. Make no mistake about it. I was shocked when the Detroit Lions let him get away, particularly within the division, to the Minnesota Vikings. But nevertheless, he's a target that Kirk Cousins should enjoy. I'm looking at him and what he brings to the table. Um, obviously, with the loss of Dalvin Cook there, I think you're going to see them throwing the football a little bit more. And obviously, if they choose to throw the football a little bit more, it ain't going to be the just Justin Jefferson. You're going to need Hawkinson to step up and really showcase his skill sets, and he clearly has it. So I definitely think that he's worth the investment. Um, I'm really happy for him because I think he can ball. He deserves it. And I think he's going to help Minnesota far more than he'll hurt them. Absolutely. Stephen, I think the NFC North is really interesting. It's really interesting. up for grabs. Like Minnesota could take a step forward. They could be a good team. Yeah. Maybe not. Or right. The, De back, yeah. the Detroit Lions favored to win it. Green Bay. We don't know what yeah. they're going to be. Pretty solid team. It's just what Jordan love. And I think Chicago will take a step forward with their young quarterback. I mean, they still have a ways to go. So it'll be interesting to see how I that think, plays uh, out. What I find interesting in the North mm -hmm. is that it really, really does come back down to the quarterback. Green Bay has their team yeah. pretty much intact. It's just that Jordan Love is there now instead of Aaron Rodgers. We all know Chicago's about Justin Fields. You look at Detroit, even though they've been on the come up and we've got a lot of aspirations for them, that's assuming that Jared Goff continues to do what he did the last half of the season last year, okay? And so now you have Minnesota devoid of Dalvin Cook any longer you're going mm -hmm. to be asking uh, Kirk Cousins to take on a bigger role particularly with the greatness that Justin Jefferson has put on display especially now that you've decided to invest even more in Hawkinson as well so those four quarterbacks in the AFC North in the NFC North I'm sorry are really really going to be the stories to watch out for how confident are you in Sean Payton to fix Russ well, listen, when you talk about Sean Payton, I'm just looking at a stat here right here. You talk about Sean Payton's teams have averaged the most points per game among any head coach in NFL history at 27.6 points with a minimum of 50 games. That's the situation with Sean Payton, and obviously we all know how horrific and pathetic the Denver Broncos offense was last year under Nathaniel Hackett. So we take those things into consideration and the fact that Russell Wilson had his worst year, and now you're bringing in a guy who's considered an offensive guru. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kimberly and Harry in all seriousness. When we talk about Sean Payton and offense, ain't nothing but respect, if not reverence, for the things that this man can do on the offensive side of the ball. Yep. One would surmise that that's going to be helpful, but I also think it's important to bring up this point. Sean Payton at this juncture, at this juncture, has no choice but to say anything else. The fact of the matter is, ownership went out there and they okayed Russell Wilson being given the bag. And you've invested so much in him, not just monetarily, but with assets that you were willing to move away just to acquire him. You, can't, you didn't go out and hire Sean Payton just to coach this team. Of course you want him to coach this team on both sides of the ball to be that guy, to be a steward of the franchise and to win football games. But primarily, equally as primary of responsibility, is for him to validate the investment. And I say this to both of y'all as a former player and as an extraordinary reporter in Kimberly throughout the years. Y'all know what I'm about to say is absolutely true. Business folks, particularly NFL owners, love their selections to be justified. You want to make sure that if you spent this money, that you exhaust every means necessary 
to look as good as you possibly can, to look as smart as you possibly can. If Russell Wilson goes out there and wets the bed, it doesn't look good for Sean Payton. It certainly doesn't look good for ownership and the investment that they've made in him. So Sean Payton at this juncture is definitely going to say what he's saying. I just think he means it, but it's very predictable what he's saying at this juncture because he'd better say it. Can I ask a question? Will it be a failure if Sean Payton wins a Super Bowl with the Broncos, but Russell Wilson is not the quarterback? No. So, so uh, I find it interesting because, yes, you want return on your investment. We gave up right. a lot of money. We gave up a lot of draft picks. And we gave mm -hmm. up players to get Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. Sean Payton was brought here to fix Russ, but ultimately in his tenure to get them to a Super Bowl and win it. And that's why I'm not sure the question of will he be able to fix Russell Wilson, I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I but do it, not but, know. But it's par for the but, course. It but, won't happen. Like, it, Russell Wilson won't get fixed after a Super Bowl is won or not fixed at all. In other words, you'll learn about Russell Wilson quicker right. than you'll learn about the success of Sean Payton. <laughs> yes, but here's, but here's the saying. thing. Here's the thing. I think Sean Payton, his ultimate objective is to win a Super Bowl here. He needs to give Russ a long leash so that, he under, so that we know we can all see Russ is either the answer or he's going to be a liability. And from there, you make a decision. Like, if this team... I don't think it'll get to this point. But, Harry, if this team were to win a Super Bowl with Jarrett Stidham, let's say, that's still a win. Sean Payton has still done his job or any other quarterback. So, yes, you want to fix Russ, but Russ has to get on board because with this Super Bowl, what we're trying to build. And I'll tell you one thing I know about Sean Payton, playing in the NFC South with the Atlanta Falcons, going against him while he was the head coach for the New Orleans Saints, is that the way he likes to run his offense, timing, Rhythm, multiple mm -hmm. personnel groupings, getting the football out of your hand, not holding on to it, not putting your offensive line in bad situations because you are holding the ball. So first, when we look at everything, we look at Sean Payton in the offense and we look at Russell Wilson, first of all, the styles contrast. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm not optimistic. I actually have to see it happening for me yeah. to believe it. And then when I look at the first six games, I think we'll be able to tell everything we need to know in the first six games of the season for the Denver Broncos because – they have the Las Vegas Raiders. That's a game that they probably should win. They have the Washington Commanders with Sam Howe at the quarterback position. That should be a game they, they can win. I don't have them beat the Miami Dolphins. And then they have the Chicago Bears. Now, when things get really interesting is those next five or six games where you have the New York Jets, you have the Kansas City Chiefs, you have the Green Bay Packers, the Chiefs again, and the Buffalo uh, Bills. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a, but is six a time games frame. enough? You would, you would make up a deci your decision about whether Russ can be the guy after six games. Because of the, the level of investment, you have to know. So obviously, you're synonymous with the Niners. They've had an interesting run, to say the least, at the quarterback position. Going from Jimmy G to Trey Lance to Brock Purdy, and most recently, trading Lance to the Cowboys has been major news. What do you think of how San Francisco has just handled all of this? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough situation to be in. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, they made a lot of trades to get up there to pick Trey. And, um, but it, the NFL still hasn't figured out, I think, the draft and how it all works because you can go through the league all the way around. Not to say Trey's a bust. You can find a lot of players in the first round that end up uh, not doing well and not being in the right system. And I think the, the biggest thing for Trey is that he needs to find a place that he's comfortable with in the system. And I just don't think I saw ever saw a comfort level for him um, in that system. It's, it's a system that's played inside the pocket. He came from a system in college that always got him outside. He had different reads that happened. And uh, the pocket is not a place to learn, try to learn to throw from when you get to the NFL and, um, or make a living of. And if you go back and look at the, at Shanahan's offense, it's a pocket system. And I, I just think that it wasn't a fit for Trey. Great okay. athlete, still still could be a great player, but it was right. not in that system. Yeah. Joe Montana, it's always good to see you, my brother. It's always good to see you. I, 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 now, I know the quarterback situation is a little complicated, and I get that with Mr. Irrelevant as your starting quarterback with Brock Purdy, but he earned it. Happy for him. Trey Lance, we figure out. We'll, we'll see what you do down the line. What shouldn't be difficult, Joe Montana, is re-signing Nick Bosa. 34 sacks, 40 hits for a loss. I mean, the, the, yeah. this, the defensive player of the year, it 
it shouldn't be that complicated to get something done with this guy. <laughs> what are your thoughts about that real quickly? <clears throat> I totally agree with you, Stephen. Um, I think he's a big key part of that defense. And, you know, they, they got a Super Bowl uh, caliber team. Um, he's, a, he's a big piece in that puzzle. And uh, you can't win in this league without a good defense. And, you know, like I said, he needs to be signed. And I can't believe it's taken this long uh, to get it done. I'm sure they'll get it done here pretty quickly. At least our, I think all 49er fans and everyone out here in the Bay Area got their fingers crossed that it gets done here quickly. But uh, uh, I think it would be a total disservice to the team if they don't get him signed quickly. Amen. Joe, Amen. I have something for you. You've obviously had a legendary career, but I think it's so interesting now how much the game has changed, right? The stricter rules protecting the quarterback, it's so different than when you played. What do you think it would have been like for you playing under these current rules? What would have been different about your career? <clears throat> I might not have had 27 surgeries. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, <clears throat> I, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, the game has changed from many, many years ago. It's always in that process. And um, they're trying to protect players. They're trying to make the game. Uh, people want to see the ball thrown. And so they're trying to make it easier for that to happen. And obviously, the, the owners want to protect the guy they're paying usually the most money on the field. And, and it's in a, in a precarious situation as a quarterback. We're probably that position is probably the only position that always gets hit when you're standing still. You, you can't protect yourself. Um, you're getting hit by guys that outweigh you by 100 to 150 pounds. And the biggest thing I thought was it's OK to hit them. Just don't let them compress you into the ground because that's where the guys get hurt. Yeah. And hey, being able to do that at that level where you know you're not going to take that big hit, I think makes the good quarterbacks even better uh, when you get there because you just take that little piece out of your mind. And I won't say it's almost like the seven on seven in practice, <clears throat> but it um, it certainly has a relief of a certain amount of pressure that hey, I can stand in here and try to deliver this ball uh, accurately because that used to be the separator um, years ago. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.